That gets the juices going. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back for another Girl Talk. It is your girl, Angel and Light, and... Emmanuel Light. Your and, boy, Manny. <laughs> yes. And we are here to share with you guys some things that we've learned from being married. I shared in the last video a few that I had. And so we're going to start off with Emmanuel. Yes. So... You want me to go with all three? Um, you could say you could say your first one and then how and why, how you noticed it, or like how you learned it, or like you know, just a little something, something. Okay. I think the first one, it is more important how you say something than what you say. Um, I think a lot of times, like I was giving an example to our pastors that I came home and I just like asked angel something and it was kind of a little bit out of excitement just wanted to know and her reaction was threw me off far and I was like what <laughs> and I kind of just like walked away um, and, that, and it happens a lot like in general just how you say something a lot of times is more important than what you say how when um, the atmosphere of what you say you sure you didn't watch my video no way Okay, just, just wondering. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like that, how you say certain things because how you could, I remember when we were in premarital, they said it's what you say, how you say it, how the other person hears it and what they process it as. And so for those of you guys who are married and those who are engaged, that's something to keep in mind. So how you say things, I like that one. The next one is, I think, in the spirit of Valentine's, it's when you're with someone for an extended period of time, like when you first start dating and whatnot, everything is like Google Gaga, you're constantly bringing flowers, text messages, yeah. talking. But when you get married and, how you say, and time has passed, it's not that you don't love the person anymore, you don't feel the affection for that person, but just let's be honest, like, it kind of, um, you saying it all the time and whatnot, you feel like by this point, they get it, <laughs> they should know, um, and sometimes you have to, um, just do stuff spontaneously, um, I know a lot of guys, well, probably females too, but I know guys always say, oh, um, Valentine's, I say it, Valentine's is a, is a female holiday. Yes, 1000% it is. Um, but, or I love you throughout the year. I don't, I, that's why I don't celebrate Valentine's. But at the end of the day, I feel like it is important, just an example of outward, outwardly expressing, um, you know, your affection or love for someone. That in no way or form means, um, breaking the bank. <laughs> yeah. 100%. I see so many people judge how someone love for someone based on how many roses they buy or the most expensive restaurant or, or whatnot. And that is truly just extremely great marketing, you know, by companies. And, and that's not what it's about. It's like, um, it's more just showing affection, being there, um, and all the other stuff is just for, um, like what we're doing here for YouTube, Instagram, for a show. So don't feel as if that if you, you, you have to express that way. That's why you definitely want to, um, this one right here. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm way off. <laughs> financial. <laughs> you know, be, you know, financial. Like when you're doing this stuff, um, definitely keep that in mind. But it is important to once in a while over exaggerate your love um, outwardly show it because in your mind you're like they should know this I like I get up I give them um, I work or you're in this house or um, so I love you like that's a dumb question to ask me if I love you right that's how you feel sometimes but sometimes you have to outwardly, outwardly um, express it mm -hmm. I, I like that um not and we're not saying if you do go to fancy restaurants and x y and z that you're not in love with that person that you're with we're just saying that when we 
at how everyone expresses their love to one another is different. Um, when Emmanuel says, express it more, show it outwardly, it doesn't have to be those luxurious things because Instagram and um, social media inflates it a lot. And I agree. And I think when you're in a relationship, the maturity grows a lot. And so you start to recognize what's more important and what's not as important. Um, and you make decisions for you guys and what works for you guys. Like, I remember one day Emmanuel came home and he brought me home, like, some flowers. And I was so happy. Like, you know what I mean? It was just that spontaneous. It wasn't because it was Valentine's Day. It wasn't my birthday. It wasn't our anniversary. It wasn't anything like that. He just bought me flowers. And I remember I was excited. I was happy. Um, so, and I think that also ties into knowing your, your partner's love language, too. Like... Some people like getting flowers. Some people like being told how much you appreciate them. Some people like physical touch. What's my love language? Ooh, um, on the spot. Ooh, ooh. You like physical touch. Mm -hmm. Wait, name them again. So there's physical touch, words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> there's Okay, so there's physical touch, words of affirmation. Um quality time, gift giving, and then acts of service. So quality time and words of affirmation. That's definitely my high too. Um, his is definitely acts of service and physical touch. This man loves when I rub his head or rub his back, and so I know that. So, And that's, that's important to know when you're with somebody too. How I love him might be different from how I receive love. Like how Emmanuel said, I'm words of affirmation. I need to hear him say, good job, babe, or I love you, babe, or that's amazing, babe. Um, versus he doesn't really care to hear it. He just rather me rub his back, you know what I mean, to feel love. So how you love someone and how you receive love sometimes is different. And you have to know your partner in order to do that. So, okay, cool. Yes, and as she said, I, I don't want to say that if you just spend a boatload of money um, on Valentine's means you don't love the person. I'm just saying that um, if you don't have the means, you don't it's okay. need to. So what's the difference if I drive to the flower shop and I buy one rose and I buy a hundred roses, what is the difference? If you buy a hundred roses in a fancy card and I buy one rose and I hand draw my card with a personal message mm -hmm. like maybe you can't like I guess the hand drawn card could be you know, an Instagram moment because yeah. you know that's important like, yeah. in this new society but um, if you have the means to buy all the roses and it, it doesn't financially put you anywhere yeah. um, then definitely you know do it but mm -hmm. don't feel as if you have to and because the reason why I stress that is because I see and know yeah. so many people, they never say they get divorced or they separate because of mm -hmm. um, finances, but that is the cause yeah. of a lot of stress that causes a lot of other things. Yeah, so that's that's really important. So if you're a, a wife and you're watching this by yourself, maybe you should grab your husband and watch it with him because sometimes we need to hear it from couples and not just one person like, I know if I was a woman and I just kept hearing husbands telling me what I should do and what I should receive and what I should accept, I'd be like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, so anyways, what's your next one? So so far, just saying that, I'm saying this not because I'm a professional, I'm good. No. It's just that I've took a lot of lumps in, <laughs> and no. I'm learning, right? So I, I don't like, oh, he thinks he's, yeah. I know I'm not that. <laughs> I'm just being honest of, you know, stuff I have struggled with or... I have seen um, friends struggle with. And I think also as a couple, we've been married for three years and it's something that even if you've been married for like, I don't, I don't know, like maybe even 10 years, it's good to hear again where it's like, don't put that pressure of other people's expectations in your relationship. And so. All right, and the last one. Did you kiss me in the beginning of this video? No. <laughs> Um, the last one, I I'll just say like um, this list, right? Um, you definitely want to really focus on this stuff. So you have, uh, you know, spiritual, mental, physical, emotional, um, really you know, financial and stable. And a lot of it is also wrapped in with communication, right? 
um, because like when you have financial goals and um, goals, dreams, aspirations, sometimes you have to really put yourself in some, you know, uh, I don't know the word, but fight, uh, be financially tight, right? Oh yeah. So you have to make some sacrifices, some sacrifices and whatnot, and that could be um, stressful. Um, that could be stressful on you, right? And um, so you want to take that, but you have to make those sacrifices financially to get to your goals of where you want to be uh, financially. You have to. I just want to. I want them to be able to see it. Make those um, sacrifices physically so you can get to your goals of being physically or being mentally strong or spiritual, and that all adds up to being stable. Yeah. Stable within your um, within. So I think that is extremely extremely important. Whereas for me, like after I got we got married, like I gained weight. You know. Me too. Um, and at the end of the day, like I, I like to say, people like to uh, laugh is that like um, if if someone eats bacon and tomorrow they decide oh. they love bacon today and tomorrow they decide to go vegan, it doesn't mean the next day um, the smell of bacon doesn't arouse them, right? And um, a lot of times, there's certain things about someone. It might be. Like how, like some people, like a oh man, the way how that person was so spiritual in church really turned me on. Mm -hmm. And then after you get them, you start falling back, or yeah. like how mentally strong you are, right? Or how physically you are. Like we have, and I think sometimes is a cause of bickering about just being honest about you know what we want for each other mm -hmm. um, physically, right? Um, <clears throat> because it's just certain things I always I know over years like that's mm -hmm. gonna pass but like I want you know I want I would like my wife to be this way yes. doesn't mean I'm like go to the gym or do this is that we will go together and yes, do this together. because this is what I want like you know um communication and app what do you want like you know what I'm saying you can't be expected um like for the guy, this beautiful wife, but you got a beer gut. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It doesn't make no sense. You, you can't even take a walk for a mile. Or right? not only that, but maybe it's not even physical for her. Like if you're not even communicating with her or spending yeah. actual time. Whatever, Whatever it, it is. is. I like to bring the physical back because mm -hmm. that really gets It's people. easier to, to got, That gets the juices going. <laughs> 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 um, physical always starts a conversation. Um, but yeah, so that, that, and that's the reason why um, we made this hoodie, so it, yeah. it just reminds us on a daily basis of what we um, what we want to put forward. So just mm -hmm. communication, focusing on certain things, not always thinking of today and now, but thinking you know long term. You know, with these things, mm -hmm. um, will be uh, be great. Yeah. yeah. And whatever you want of the other person, just be a part of that journey with them. So it doesn't seem like you're just pointing fingers and um, sending them off to, on their own to figure it out. Because a lot of times it's just um, the mere fact of um, them seeing you, you know, thrive for this. It could, it could be a, a point of something in common, right? And just doing something, whatever it may be. So, yeah. yeah, so that's it. So those are your points? Yeah. Okay, so I have two more points that I want to share. And so the first point is that He's not a mind reader. That's something I learned in marriage. Um, I can't expect him to know what I want or um, how I feel. And so I know there's tons of videos of, especially with minority couples where the woman's just like upset. She's just sitting here all upset and stuff. And the guy comes to her and he's like, what's wrong? But then she doesn't say anything. And it's like, that's probably the, the worst thing you can do to your partner. It's like when you're upset or something's on your mind, they ask you what's wrong, but then you don't give them the answer and you just expect them just to know just because. Um, I think that's unfair. And I think one thing I've learned is that he's not a mind reader, I'm not a mind reader. We have to say what's wrong because if you don't say what's wrong, you just build it, you just store it up and then later it becomes an issue because you explode because something just you know pops the balloon. And so that's something I've learned. If I'm upset, if I'm happy, I'm just gonna say it. Um, and this goes for any and everything. Like, 
I'm, I'm because married people are watching this. I'm gonna even say even for sex, like communicate what you like during sex. He's not gonna know. I'm not gonna know. You have to know how to please your partner and how to how to just be honest with them and keep it real because they're not my readers. So yeah. Okay. And the last point. And my last point. My last point is. <laughs> My last point is be careful who you confide in like I know there's certain people I can talk to about my marriage I know there's certain people I can talk to about my relationship that I know that will give me sound advice um, that won't judge me and won't gossip about me as well as um, listen because you could talk to somebody and they're not actually listening um, and I've, I've recognized that establishing a community of like-minded couples like for us the couples that we talk to have these things in mind they're, they're thinking about their spiritual they're thinking about their mental their physical their emotional and they're really striving to be stable in these areas um along with their spouse and so one thing i've learned is that not everybody can be the listening ear for me or for us um and not everyone can give us advice and that's okay like you have different friends for different things but having um at least one or two couples that you can go to and talk to and i know for me the people i go to they pray for us and so i know they're not even just saying hey they're gonna figure it out they're also putting it before god and so that's something i can say yeah definitely and the hardest part is family probably mom oh yeah father. That too. um because of you just have to remember it's not that they're trying to sabotage your marriage it's not that they're um, trying um, to be mean, they're just going off of what they know. So if if you have a parent, and not and this is not in all cases, but in most cases, like if they are single, right? Um, I see this a lot. Um, I've seen more examples of it with mothers that if they're separated and they had trauma from their ex um, husband or whatnot, the minute you go to them talking about something, they just in defense of not wanting you to go through what they went through, they're like, like, you yeah. can cut the cord, it's not that bad, I did it, and it's never about building or, or, or working forward. Forgiveness. So, yeah. and, and that's just not mothers. I'm just saying that the examples I've seen is mothers. I've heard examples of fathers, like, justifying, hey, like, man, it's it's all right, you know, you know, I did this or, or whatnot. Um, so, you just have to really choose who you talk to, um, more of most likely someone that's in an area or position that you um, want to get to, mm -hmm. um, someone that's been through the same thing, someone that um, shared with you like, hey, me and my wife, we went through it, almost got a divorce, but we went to counsel and we did this and then now you right. see they're happily. So they could, you know, have an honest idea of what you're going through and how they achieve the goal that you wanted. Because I'm different than a lot of other people. I feel like there are just some cases where staying in a relationship is not wise, right? Um, I, I know the stigma, especially in Christianity and religions about divorce, but I believe that it, it's, there's some cases where I've seen where it's just yeah, it's because, not healthy. Yeah, if you but, marry the wrong person, you just... Yeah, but, <laughs> so, um, but also, you just want to know that you're trying and you're and you're not your foot's not out the um um halfway out the door mm -hmm. so communicate with people that have been through it and achieve the result you want and um friends that are you know just as young as you that can listen yeah. and then won't pass judgment because remember when you share something about your husband or your wife if it's not a a mentally you know a yeah. mentally strong individual then um later on when you fix the stuff with your wife or your husband yeah. that friend or family member is still going to judge them right. and try to hold this over them and that's going to affect their relationship moving forward mm -hmm. yes no yeah and I, I agree with that and i think some of the red flags you can look out for if you're going to somebody something that they would do is if they belittle your spouse that's somebody you shouldn't talk to and if they sound like they're too like emotional about it like one thing i can say about somebody that emmanuel confines in i know he's not emotional about whatever he shares he's non-biased um and he doesn't belittle me as a wife you know whenever they're talking or whatever um and so that's what i would say to look for 
look for when you can find in someone because that that is something that would kind of be a trigger point in. So, you close us out in the video. How you close it out? <laughs> okay. You, you you say the tags in the... You, you remember, you be telling me all the time, babe, don't forget to say. Oh, um, yes. Uh, we thank you for taking the time of watching this. Please, you know, follow us on Instagram, um, TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> you know, definitely hit the subscribe, brother, um, subscribe button on YouTube and comment. Let us know. Let us know um, your thoughts, if there's any topics you want to talk about. And if there's any disagreements, um, definitely share it with us. Don't be rude and cursing and all that. The minute I see that, I don't even read it. So yeah. that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. But if you have a disagreement and you feel different about something we say, we love to um, engage that conversation or at a minimum, at least read it and have a conversation um, with our um, among ourselves about it so that we could better serve the, um, the masses. Mm -hmm. And so, again, thank you. If you watch this with your spouse, we're believing and praying for you guys. And you're beautiful, you're brilliant, you're blessed. And to all those who are engaged and even single and waiting, oh, I want to show you guys the difference in sizes. For the husband journals, and you could buy it if you're a man, obviously without the heart, the card set, but just the journal because it just says all my love. But this is how they look in person. The sizes are different. This is the mini and this is the full size. And I just want to show you guys what the cover looks like. And the reason why I said guys can buy it is because it's very simple. It just says all my love, excuse the nails. We're not talking about it, like I said. Um, but this is a place that you can go and write if you're a writer or even if you're not a writer. But yes, I love you guys. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Don't you ever let anyone dim your light. And as always, there's nothing you can do to separate yourself from God's love. And so be blessed.